Hi everyone, my name is Yolanda. Welcome to another tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to start a Dominica cake for a wedding. If you like to make your own wedding cake, a simple one, you want to make it for yourself or for someone else, you can use this tutorial as a guide. Um, I'm going to be using three pounds of Dominican cakes. I'm going to utilize three types of cake pans. One is 10 by two, the other one is eight by two, and the last one is six by two. Um, I'm going to be using three pounds of cakes, or Dominican cakes, okay? And I'm going to divide the, those pounds into these three uh, cake pans. So, but for the sake of time, I will only make one pound and show you how I make a Dominican cake. Okay, so now we're going to be working with the ingredients. I like to show you the ingredients and the quantity that we are going to be using for this one pound of cake. Remember that I said at the beginning that for the sake of time, I will be showing you only how to make one pound. You know that this cake is three pounds, okay? Um, first off, I'd like to start by showing you the butter. Uh, this is uh, one pound of butter, or you may also use margarine, okay? one pound of sugar sometimes I use less than one pound but it's up to you you could use the whole pound or you could use a little bit less here I have here one cup of water with one tablespoon of Dominican vanilla you may substitute the water for juice or milk you could use either juice milk or water um, I have the dried ingredients here, which is one pound of all-purpose flour with one tablespoon of baking powder and a pinch of salt. All right, now these are the eggs. Um, I'm using 12 eggs. If the eggs that you are using are too big, are extra large, you may use nine or 10 eggs depending on the size but this time I'm using 12. These are my 12 egg yolks right here 12 then my egg whites I separated them for uh, to be folded into the batter after it's been beat uh, and formed peak and the other eight that is going to be used for my meringue. To start the process, we will go into cream, the butter, and the sugar. In the meantime, I will beat the four egg whites that I will be later on incorporating or folding into our cake batter. Now that my butter is ready, it's creamy, I will now add the eggs one by one. Then, I will be adding the dry ingredients and the liquid, alternating them. A little bit of dry ingredients, a little bit of liquid. I will start with dried ingredients and finish with dry ingredients. Once that is been well mixed, I remove the bowl from the mixer, scrape everything from the paddle, from the blade, and 
also scrape the bottom and the sides of the bowl and then I will proceed to incorporate or to fold in the four egg whites. Little by little until all the egg whites have disappeared within the batter. And that's how you make Dominican cake. So now, the batter is going to be divided into two cake pans, and as you can see, I have leftover batter. From time to time, when we overfill our cake pans, our cakes come out with a crown, just like the one that is showing here. We need to remove it by using either a serrated knife or a cake leveler. By doing this, we will acquire a level cake and we will have no problems when we stack our tiers on top of each other. This is very important in cake stacking that we level our cakes. For a more smoother or softer cakes, I like to sprinkle or spray a little bit of simple syrup. Simple syrup keeps cakes moist and soft. As you can see here, this is one of the tiers that I'm going to be using for the cake. I have already leveled all the cakes and filled them with custard. This one is being filled with custard. But before that, I make sure that I put a uh, cake circle underneath my cake and leveled it all the way around. I've done that with all the rest of the cakes. And now comes a very important part in the making of this cake, which is making meringue, Italian meringue or Dominican meringue. We need one cup of egg whites, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of meringue, powder meringue, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And if you desire, you may also put some um, lemon, lemon juice, a couple of drops of lemon juice. Here in my saucepan, I have three quarter cups of water and three cups of granulated sugar. Okay, so before I turn on the stove to put the syrup to boil, I need to really mix well the water and the sugar. Water and sugar needs to be mixed well and that's also to avoid crystal um, sugar crystals around the saucepan. So once once this starts to boil, I will turn on the mixer right away. So how did I know when I should pour the syrup into the egg whites? To know if the syrup is ready to be poured into the egg whites. You can use a candy thermometer. You attach the candy thermometer to the saucepan and when it reaches 230 degrees, you can pour the syrup into the egg whites. You may also use a plate, a small plate with cold water and just spoon out a little bit of the syrup into the cold water. If it forms a soft ball, then that means that the syrup is ready to be uh, poured into the egg whites. So now I'm going to turn on my stove and I'm going to start the process of boiling the water with the sugar. And as soon as that starts to boil, I will turn on my mixer. So now that 
the syrup is started to boil, I will turn on the mixer. And when it reaches to 130 degrees, the syrup, I will pour it into uh, the bowl, into the mixing bowl. My syrup is ready if you notice when I lift up the spoon when it comes down it's like a fine thread that's how it's supposed to be that's an indication that it is ready I will also test it in another way which is the plate with the cold water I will pour a little bit of the syrup and if that makes a soft ball and indeed, that is a soft ball there. Look at that. See that coming down? That means that the syrup is ready to be poured into our egg whites. So now I'm ready to pour the syrup into my egg whites and I will do it very slowly little by little. I do not want the syrup to touch the bottom of the bowl. So I have to be very careful because I don't want none of the syrup to go to the bottom. I want the syrup to envelop the egg white as I pour it down. You just need to be very patient and just very careful because that syrup is very hot. So little by little, we do it until we pour in all the rest of it. Being careful not to let the syrup go to the bottom. And once that is been mixing or beating for a long for a little while, um, one way to find out whether it's ready or not is to touch the bowl at the bottom. If the bowl is cool to the touch, then that means that the meringue is ready. If it's not cool to the touch, when you touch it like this, you need to let it whip more, you need to let it mix more. It needs to be completely cool to the touch before you remove it from the mixer. Well, my bowl is cool to the touch and now I am ready to remove the mixing bowl from the mixer. You see that color, that nice color? I have put a drop of brown and it's giving me this nice color, cream color. Uh, if you see the texture of the of the meringue, that's how it's supposed to look with a peak. See that? See, and if I lift it up, and if I smooth it out with a knife, I should get a texture, a nice texture, almost like a silky texture. Look at that. That is a beautiful meringue. go like that and it doesn't fall off 
that means that the texture is excellent. That's how you make an awesome meringue. So now we are going to cover our cakes, all of them, with three tiers. We are going to cover them with the meringue. Just like I'm doing with this one, all of them will be covered. Since I'm not going to be doing a lot with this cake, I decided that I wanted to text texturize it. You may do that with an implement like this one, a texturizing like this, or you may use a spoon or a knife or a fork to texturize your cakes. When you are texturizing a meringue covered cake, you need to do that right away. As soon as you ice your cake, if you are going to texturize it, you need to do it right away. Because right after you cover your cake with the meringue, on the inside, the meringue starts to form air bubbles and when you when you disturb the meringue after it's been sitting there for a little while you um, will get a lot of grainy uh, surface and so you need to texturize your cake uh, meringue covered cake as soon as you cover it with the meringue so now we are ready to stack our tears but before we do that let me explain something to you when you stack a cake you need to support the bottom cake so that the top cake will not sink in and cave in and uh, make a mess of your cakes we use supports these are dowel rods which are supports. You may find this in any AC Moore or maybe Michaels or perhaps Walmart. They are easy to find. You may find supports that are like this, wooden. Um, then you will find the plastic also. They come in different sizes. The one that I'm using right now, this one is a quarter of an inch uh, in diameter. A quarter of an inch thick. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, support the bottom cake and then we will stack the second cake on top and then support that cake to stack the last or the first cake on top. So what we do is we mark, um, we see where, you see how white our cake is and we go from there, we mark, we are going to mark four places within the center um, of the cake taking into consideration the size of the cake that is going on top we are going to mark four spots and we are going to put our support right there so what i'm going to do now i'm going to take the dowel rod insert it in the cake and just going to wiggle it a little bit just back and forth so that way the frosting or the suspiro or the meringue will mark the top will it will mark the height of the cake you see that mark up there i'm going to be cutting that support right there because that marks the height of the cake and then I'm going to put it back in there I'm going to be doing this four times as support for the cake that is going on top of this cake so I have already placed three of the dowel rods in the cake well this is my final one and I just wanted to show you how it's going to be inserted so you don't touch your cake you may use 
a dowel rack is to push down where the rack, the dowel rack that you inserted in the case. So just push it down. That way your hands do not touch the cake. Alright, I'm going to be showing you how I did that. The four holes. Okay, so now that is being supported um, with those dowel rags. And then when I place the cake that goes on top, that cake will have support. Alright, now that my support is there, I'm going to be bringing my cake and I'm going to be placing it on top. This is how my cake is going to be placed. You take your spatula, you put it underneath the, car, uh, the cake and you just place it down, making sure that if you're not sure what the where the middle is you bring it out again and just make sure that you're placing it right on top on the center being very careful okay and that's it if you need to move it a little bit over then you do that if not then you just leave it alone and continue doing the same thing that you did Putting the four rods, the four dowel rods on top of, of uh, the second tier, just like you did for the first one as support. After doing the same thing with the next case, with the second tier, I am now ready. If you see here, the hole that I made for the, on the second tier, I am ready now to put the top tier on, on top of the middle tier being very careful not to mess up anything and that's it okay so this is how you stack a cake but we are not done yet we need one more dowel rack to put through the middle Alright, for the next double rod that is going to go right through all the tiers, we are going to take a double rod and we are going to cut it almost as high as the whole cake. And we are going to cut that. Then we are going to take one of the ends and we are going to sharpen very sharp the uh, one of the ends. You may do that with a uh, with a blade or a cutter or maybe a, a pencil sharpener. So whatever that you can use to just to uh, sharpen uh, the end of that rod. All right, so I have my support, my dowel rod that is going to support the middle. And as you can see, it has a sharp point. Now I'm going to stick that right through the middle of the cake going down. Okay, and when you do that, you should hear the cardboard as uh, when you go through, when the dowel rod goes through the cardboard, you should hear it pop. So uh, right now, I'm just going to stick the, um, the dowel rod in the middle. camera so it's gonna go right through the middle okay you turn it you keep turning it until it pops the first one you turn it turn it turn it and it pops the second one and you should bring it down all the way very carefully okay and that end I'm going to push it down with another dowel rod. And that's it. My cake is 
secure, my cave will not fall, will not sink in, will not cave in, and it will not move. So I am very confident that if I transport this cake, it will not fall. And if you see in the middle there, that a hole was the hole that the dowel rat went through. You could cover that using some icing. Just go over that with icing. And that's how you uh, prepare a stack cake. Okay, time to make rosettes for the edges of the tears. To make a rosette, you just make a star and then you just look the icing around and that's it. I made uh, the ones on top, I made a smaller and as I went down, I increased the size. The last one, that the bottom tier, I made them kind of flat. Um, and that's it for this cake. Next, we are going to be placing the flowers, uh, the roses, and that'll be it for this three-tier cake. So we are going to make now the roses that are going to be used for decoration on the cake. They are made with fondant, so you need to make them at least one or two days ahead of time. To make these beautiful roses, we need to cut circles out of rolled out fondant. Use a cookie cutter or fondant flowers cutter. Cut circles depending on the size that you like your rose. That's how big you are going to cut the circles. You will then cut the circles on, in half and the first petal will be a complete circle. You will roll down until you make like a thin cigar. That is going to be your first petal. You will then attach the half circle. Before you attach them, you have to soften the edges with your fingers and attach the half circle to the first petal and so forth. Once you attach a petal, you should pinch back the petal as to make the impression that the rose is opening. Then you will cut the remainder bottom of the rose and let it dry. Next, 